head off here. But I need to have them all out Hey, can we have a police call? We just came back to the great. Everyone's just day two. Take care. Drive safe. You guys are going to be for Hi. Is it Greg? Greg. Greg, hi. Um, so how how long is uh, how long have you been in occupation at Indianapolis? Since the first day, which was two weeks ago today. Okay. And are is it a permanent twenty four hours, seven yep. days a week um, encampment or at this time it is, yes. Okay. I, I don't see any tents around. No, we, we aren't allowed to sleep here. Okay. But do you have a a human presence at all hours? Yes. Okay. So that's how you're managing the not allowed to sleep here. Right. Okay. Right. Um, and does the when I drove up, I actually happened to be stopped at a traffic signal where people were marching by with signs. So I got some some video of that. Um, how often are you guys doing actions, and what kinds of actions? Well, the march today was an unannounced march. It came up in general assembly last night. Um, I, the word, of course, didn't get out. Um, the march last weekend, we had a little over. 1,200 people. The March the weekend before, we had about a thousand people. Mm -hmm. um, wow. Next weekend, it is an announced march. It's a national march, as is the weekend following. So I expect that we'll probably see the same numbers. Hopefully, with the presence, with everything that's going on, we'll be able to have more people participating on a daily basis throughout the, the course of the entire day. Mm -hmm. um, usually, at our general assemblies, which we hold at seven o'clock every night. Um, we usually have a, a fairly good number of people, somewhere between 30 and 70 people at minimum. Um, we aren't allowed to have a general assembly if there are fewer than 20 people here. So was that something agreed upon by your general assembly? Yes. I see. Yes. Yeah. And it takes 90 for, for us. It takes ni uh, it's not a majority rule. It takes uh, uh, 90 percent of the people to vote in favor of something before it passes. Okay. Um, well, I, I'll say first because you don't have a permanent sleeping encampment here. Um, it's it's a different kind of structure. I see that you have food and supplies over here. Um, to what extent are you um, in need of community support and to what extent do you receive community support? Um, we've had <clears throat> We've actually had awesome community support. I mean, we, of course, we have our detractors, the people that, that disagree with us, which we welcome. But we've had a, a lot of support from a lot of people. Um, a lot of people asking, you know, hey, where can I make a donation? I'm not able to come down there and participate, but I want to help you. And as of yet, we have not organized the facilities for us to be able to take donations. Mm -hmm. So we've, we've declined the donations. Um, we've got uh, a gentleman who feeds us. Um, he, has, he has a warehouse. He takes care of all of our blanket needs, feeding needs, and, and whatnot for you know the small group that we have right now. Mm -hmm. um, I think that we're going to be proposing in General Assembly here within the next few nights that we do um, establish a a, an account at one of the local credit unions mm -hmm. um, under the name of Occupy Indy, which will allow people the ability to make donations if they so wish. As of yet, we do not really have any de facto treasurer or the ability to manage that money, and we don't want to take any money from any people without a firm understanding of that. So we haven't. We've been refusing donations, but many people have brought down food. Um, warm clothing, water, um, pretty much all of our immediate day-to-day -day needs have been taken care of by different members in the community. Okay, um, and I, I noticed from your web presence that I think you're using Blogspot or uh, WordPress or something like that, and WordPress. then Facebook. Um, and so I'm curious, do you have a media team? Do you have yes. breakout groups and who's managing your media? We, we do. Not who is managing your media, but what kind of media management do you have as a structure? We do, but we're, we're right now passing over our very first hump in the process, mm -hmm. and it's a very serious situation that we're encountering right now, where there's a separation within the organization based on my opinion because of a small number of people trying to take control of the situation. Mm -hmm. um, some of the people 
I believe, have been mis misled to follow those people. Um, one of those people was our media consultant, the person mm -hmm. that was in charge of our media, one of, the, one of those committees. Mm -hmm. um, I have spoken to the people that are involved, and they have promised that they will come down Sunday as a group, all of them, everybody down here Sunday for our General Assembly, and then everything can be presented before General Assembly. Right now, we are at risk of disintegrating and, and no longer be, being a movement. I mean, we are, that's a very real possibility, very soon. Because of that splintering. Because of that splintering. But, but, but I, I believe, I believe in what we're doing. I've never done anything like this in my life before. I believe in what we're doing. The people that are down here believe in what we're doing. And, and I truly believe in the human goodness and in the ability to communicate with past differences that will be able to heal the divide. That's a, that's a good point. In a lot of the occupies, I've seen that there are people who are more interested in agitating, and in large part because they're frustrated at how slow the process of democracy can be. Um, and the exercise of direct democracy... She's, she's laughing because she knows how, how crazy it is. Yeah. Um, but the, uh, the, the groups uh, feel like their voice is diminished or something if they aren't doing actions that are getting attention and if they aren't more sensational then they don't get attention. Um, and so I've, I've, I've heard of a similar kind of uh, issue that honestly in the other camps they also haven't solved. They're kind of at that crisis point of figuring it out. Um, but how frequently do you have your general assemblies? Every night at 7 p.m. Every night at 7. So you have the opportunity, though you don't have a you know, hundreds of people camped out here to have that conversation every day. Right, and we've had we've had pretty good turnouts every night, okay. even through the, the rain. But may uh, tell her about the, when you got online and got the support coming from everywhere. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this yeah, just for an example. I mean, we we you were asking about the support earlier. Can I change the topic? Yes, of course. Okay. Um, on Wednesday. It came, uh, Commissioner Brenner came out, um, said he was going to have everything removed, mm -hmm. and, and that we were going to be removed from the property. Um, I immediately got online on Facebook. I sent out a call to help to uh, the Facebook sites of, as I recall, it was 28 different cities, from coast to coast, and I had an outpouring of immediate support. I mean, within seconds, I, I was receiving messages back from individuals across the country. I posted the phone numbers of Mr. Brenner's office, as well as the governor, and as well as the governor's, uh, the first ladies. Um, I phone calls had to be ringing in and out, in and out. Mm -hmm. uh, at the same time, an attorney uh, in Los Angeles, who's part of the Occupy Los Angeles movement, mm -hmm. he contacted me directly, um, asked me what was going on, um, then specifically pointed me in a direction of legal remedies to help take care of the situation. Um, he admitted that he was not a, a uh, constitutional attorney, that it was a family law, but he was going to be contacting some of his friends. Mm -hmm. And then he said that they called up Commissioner um, Brenner's office and told them that the uh, restraining order um, preventing them from removing us from the uh, property here based on our First Amendment rights were going to be filed. Mm -hmm. I do not know for a fact that that is why that they backed down mm -hmm. and just said, hey, clean up your area. I don't I don't know why that happened. Mm -hmm. um, since that time, we've come to a consensus at our General Assembly the night before last to uh, look into our um, legal issues trying to be proactive. And mm -hmm. um, we have a local attorney here who's a civil rights attorney who will represent, get any of us out of jail or represent any of us pro bono, uh, which is it's just awesome. Yeah. Um, Sullivan Law Office is here. They're First Amendment attorneys. They expressed their, I called her directly and she expressed her support. She said she would be happy to file any of the paperwork we needed at the federal level. And I have an appointment Monday with the uh, Indiana chapter of the ACLU um, they express their willingness to help. I think at this point, none of us know what help we truly need, and so that's kind of the purpose of the meetings with the ACLU is is to find out what kind of help we need. Right. So, have you had any arrests here, or 
are there people in the group who are willing or unwilling to be arrested? And do you have any kind of a plan for making sure people have the opportunity to leave if you know there's going to be engagement that could lead to that? I think all of us here are willing to be arrested. I think all of us here know the risks that we're taking. Um, as far as that goes, at this point, we have not pushed the envelope. Right? We're not big enough yet to be able to push that envelope to any degree that really matters. Up to this point so far, I have nothing but praise to say for the Indiana State Police. Mm -hmm. They have done nothing but re uh, treated us with, with respect and professionalism and have expressed more than once that their sole purpose of being around here on the state grounds is to ensure our, our legal right to assembly. All right, so they've been pretty understanding. Again, we have not pushed the envelope. Mm -hmm. Not this Saturday, but the Saturday after it, that's the that's the guy talk today. Mm -hmm. um, everybody's going to be going down in group to all of their banks and closing their accounts. Mm -hmm. um, that's, of course, to see, are you going to arrest us like mm -hmm. you did the people in New York? Mm -hmm. So that's, I guess, going to be one of our first true uh, pushing the envelope kind of things, you know. And what is this? monument uh, that you are using as kind of a, a base. Truthfully, I have no clue. You are in front of a monument and you haven't read the plaque? <clears throat> Can I move this to get the text of the plaque? Yeah, I know. It's not Because, you know, I lived in Indiana for 20 years and I've, I don't have any idea who this is either. <laughs> That's Jimmy Hendrix, I think. Jimmy Hendrix. <laughs> Sorry. And then you were talking about the homeless homeless issue, and um, we've had we had a couple of uh, meetings during General Assembly, uh, proposals about the homeless and how best to help the homeless. And I mean, the, the general consensus was that the homeless people are welcome to come and take whatever they need from our, our supplies. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I mean, they're, they're, anybody's welcome here, you know. Mm -hmm. right? The one percent, they're hungry. They can come down and help themselves too. Man.